the schmutz. And, you know, um, day two began with the flea market in Elko. And this little set caught my eye. Um, it's a plate night set with that fired on color from Hazel Atlas uh, from the 30s, approximately. Lovely canary yellow color, not quite chartreuse. Love the shape here. Nice little detail, white. Um, pretty simple, but cute and kind of my style. Um, and whopping only two bucks from somebody who I don't think knew any different. Um, this is not a piece that I really should have bought considering it needs to travel all the way back to another time zone, but I couldn't resist at $25. It's a Victorian era pressed glass covered compote in absolutely perfect condition. Uh, it was priced $125, but the um, disgruntled dealer was having a sale and it was $25. Uh, I certainly couldn't pass this up. It's a, it's a really magnificent piece of glass that has survived more than 100 years. And I don't know the pattern, but that's part of the fun is figuring those things out. And I will be doing that when I get home, assuming it's in one piece. Here I am again, uh, back at the flea market again here with a uh, another fired on color that I really, it's hairpin is the pattern, and again by Hazel Atlas. And this is the sugar bowl. It kind of looks like a little trophy, and it's a darling color pink, and I'm just infatuated with it. I love these edges, and it was, I think I, it was $6, but I think I got her to let me take it off her hands for five. White on the inside, just adorable. Not sure what I'll do with it. Maybe stick some crayons in there. Um, I'm always a sucker for Hazel Atlas's modern tone pattern. Um, I do have about, I'd say, 50 pieces. Uh, the one piece I've never been able to get my hands on at a reasonable price um, are the shot glasses, which are uh, in the book at about $42 a piece. I'm thrilled to say I uh, got these for $5 for six of them at the uh, Savers. Can see the very art deco look they have to them they've got ridges they've got optic panels going up and down uh, so five dollars for six is quite a steal considering i could never find one for twenty dollars and this is uh, another find from the flea market i just fell in love with it it's got that look where i believe it's painted from the inside is that correct and we don't really know what it is, but we know it's probably around the same era. And it's really just darling. You know, you kind of get that whole Holland effect. And really in quite good shape considering, you know, it was quite functional and it really is in good shape. Um, I think Andy was able to spot a couple little tiny flecks there and combined it with another piece and the dealer let me have it for $10. And it's just one of my favorites. I'm not crazy about Danish modern, um, but I do know that I can make some money off these pieces to help defray the cost of the pieces I'll be keeping for myself. These are um, neat little salt and pepper shakers. We weren't sure. They, they kind of look like nuns or some kind of monastic figure. Um, there's the mark on the bottom. This is like Ikea from the 1960s type thing. Um, but, you know, Ikea, of course, wasn't around. And these items, today are probably quite desirable by a collector. Don't know quite how much, but we'll find out pretty soon. Uh, $10 for the pair. And then, you know, back at the flea market, I'm going in chronological order, but who's counting? Um, I found this lovely pickle jar while Andy was in one of the um, other barns and I ventured outside because I was getting a little warm and needed a breeze and um, needed a little bit of a break from the fancy stuff. This is a bit more primitive than my usual taste, but I'm thinking it would look so cute with some fake flowers in there, maybe of a paper variety. I'm sort of thinking maybe taking manuscripts or music notes and well, sheet music and doing something with it. But anyway, cute little wooden handle, obviously used for making big old pickles 
and um, ten dollars. And then throughout the rest of the flea market, I ended up finding a whole bunch of these with the lids on them for thirty-five to forty dollars. And it was kind of like, really? Aren't you going to use it for a vase anyway? I'm so glad I only spent ten dollars because who needs that lid anyway? And it looks like I got the cobwebs for free. I'm really quite happy with this piece. I think this was um, obtained on the first day in North St. Paul. Um, my, my buying partner is quite jealous of this and she's offered to take it off my hands should I decide that it's too cumbersome to transport on my Southwest flight. Um, it has an arts and crafts feel to it. It also has an Asian feel, which of course was inspired by arts and crafts, or, or inspired arts and crafts rather. Ooh, we should lay off those cocktails. Anyway, um, it is marked on the bottom, USA, though um, I am completely stumped as to its function or who made it. It's glazed, it's got a drip, drip glaze around the inside. Um, I call it a casserole. My buying partner in crime calls it something else, although she hasn't said what, so I'm not really sure what it is, but not highly functional but really nice to look at. Tomato, tomato, let's call the whole thing old. Anyway, um, speaking of old, here's a little chair I found also at the flea market. Kind of in a desperate move actually to find something to prop my new pickle jar up on. And when a flea market's about to close and you're in that last 10 minute sprint through um, old tents and musty, moldy, muddy, muddy terrain. You'll do just about anything, you know, to find what you're looking for. And I think I might have accomplished it if you just know, look at, look at that, you know, this little child's chair. I'm really not sure if it was meant to be, like, you know, if they put a little potty training device on there. But, um, you know, as you can see, it's just going to look darling in the corner to replace kind of an icky, little vignette I had going from Marshall's or Joanne or something that really wasn't inspired at all. Now we're going to do something a little bit more rustic. It looks like these are branches, not even wood really, I think it's part of a tree. And it's all been painted this lovely old chippy emerald. All in all I think it's going to be really fun with some paper flowers on there, maybe a little dude picky here and there. And I think I paid, as you can see, he had 20 on it. It was, uh, like I said, five minutes of closing in the middle of day two out of a three-day flea market, and he wouldn't go any lower than 15, and I was happy to give it to him. Well, we went to what they call an occasional sale here in, in Minnesota, um, and I found these little guys. I thought they were Danish modern, having found quite a bit of this where I live in southern New Mexico. Um, but as you can see from the reverse, they're actually made in Italy. So I fairly quickly dismissed them, but once I looked them up on my smartphone, thank God for those smartphones, I discovered that these hand-painted pieces are mid-century modern, and um, I'm actually thinking I may be able to get about $100 a piece for these items, which could completely defray the cost of everything else I purchased um, for myself. Look at that face. It's a face only a mother could love. Or an eBay shopper. And now, just as a bit of a shout out to uh, my patient spouse who accompanied us to the flea market, um, a little bit of a vignette of what he purchased. Um, you can see a couple of kind of smelly, but still probably pretty good Hawaii records. We've got Don Ho here and Hawaii Land of Enchantment. I don't know, I think these were a buck a piece. And then a old Panasonic uh, tape recorder, which how much fun is that? Who doesn't like to hear themselves talk, huh? Right, Annie? That's right. And then a fun little lenticular postcard of uh, the men on the moon. You know, who doesn't want one of those? Ooh. Thanks, Robert. Well, I really don't want one of those, but what I do want is uh, more objects for my squirrel collection, which numbers, uh, I don't know, probably between 150 and 200 pieces. These are... Um, a covered sugar bowl and a creamer um, made in Japan but distributed throughout Canada as the pitcher that I have at home and a larger creamer attest and these will go quite nicely to complete that set
We're just waiting for uh, Miss OCD here to get her act, act together. <laughs> 